life. So here, we don't waste our money. But Sheikh Sha'arawi gave us an example. He said, let's say you are well off, and you want to send your clothes to the laundry, and then they uh, iron it. He said, for some people, this might look as it's overspending. But he said, you have to look at you are helping the society. When you send your clothes to be ironed, there's something who is making a living. If none of us send our clothes for laundry and ironing, well, how is this person going to make a living? If none of us sends our shoes to be shined, how is this person who makes a living out of shining shoes? So he said, if you do it for the sake of Allah, to help the society and help the community, this is not Israf. But another example, I look, I read in the paper once that an Arab went in London and threw the money in the street and he said, I want to see the British people jumping to take money. This is Israf. But helping the society and help, helping the community, this is not Israf. And the other reason, the other thing is we don't hold tight to the money. Because some of us think we need the money for a year, two years, ten years planning in advance. Whereas we know, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if you wake up in, in the morning and you have a shelter over your uh, head and you have your food for the day, you have everything in life you, do, you, need, uh, you need. And then one of the Sahaba said, and if you have a servant, you're a king. Subhanallah. All this and how many of us feel we are kings, instead we are worried about what we have and how much could we save in the bank and we have uh, ideas uh, for our, to keep ourselves going for a year or two when our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, keep it balanced. Uh, <coughs> and then the next character of Ibadul Rahman, الَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. They do not ask anybody else than Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And if we read Surah Al-Furqan, we'll find the unbelievers, the Abudun, it says worship. But for the believers, they ask Yadun. And here they remind us because there are people who worship the dollar, people who worship their job, people who worship, but Ibadul Rahman only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sheikh Sha'rawi here explains and says, those who say it's al asbab and hold on to asbab and think it's asbab is what's going to provide for them, does not apply this ayah on them because Ibadul Rahman, Allazina la yadawna ma'allah ilaha al-akhir. They only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, uh, to provide for them. Uh, so th this is Ibadul Rahman, and we have to watch that we only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we want, we ask Allah. As the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iza sa'alt, fas'alillah. If you ask, ask Allah. Iza sta'alt, fas'alillah. Fas if you seek help, seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the next thing, la yabtuloon al-nafs. They do not kill. And the third thing, la yaznoon. They do not commit adultery. So see, characteristic of Ibadul Rahman, they only ask Allah, they don't kill other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed to kill, and they do not commit adultery. And the scholar says here, if you look at these simple rules of life, first of all, when we worship Allah, we'll be at peace with ourselves. We'll feel peaceful, we don't have to go begging, we don't have to go and demean ourselves with somebody else. And then the next thing, when we don't kill each other, when society is living in peace, the society itself has peace because everybody feels safe in the society. And the third thing, if not adultery, you feel safe for your family. And as we said before, a young man came to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the young man has this urges, he says, allow me, Ya Rasul Allah, to commit adultery. And when the Sahaba got upset, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, be quiet, leave him for me. And he asked him, would you allow it for your mother? He said, no, Ya Rasul Allah. Would you allow it for your sister? No, Ya Rasul Allah. Would you allow it for your daughter? He said, no, Ya Rasul Allah. So he said, why do you allow it for other people's wives and mothers and daughters? And the man says, it cooled me down. And I said, pray for me, Ya Rasul Allah. So Ibadul Rahman, only ask Allah, do not kill, and they do not commit adultery. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَرْقَى الْنَامًا He does these things, will be punished. And he will, يُضَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَدَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He will get the punishment double. He will have punishment double. وَيُلْقَى وَيَخْرُدُ فِيهِ مُهَانَ And he will be uh, disgraced in hell if he does commit these things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving, so he tells us after this, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَأَمَنْ عَمَلَ صَالِحًا Except those who ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and believe وَعَمَلَ صَالِحًا Do the good deeds. Because we can't just say, forgive me Allah, and I keep doing the bad deeds. I have to change my way, and I have to do the good deeds. 
For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this group, uh, this group for the Ika Yubadul Allah Zayyatim Hasanat. Those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change their bad deeds into good deeds. And as we said before, Umar ibn Khattab was joking with Abu Bakr and said in the day of uh, judgment, I'll have more hasanat than you do. So Abu Bakr Siddiq asked him, how do you figure this out? He said, because I did a lot more sayyat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, I hope to be the one of those who Allah described that you met them Allah sayyatim hasanat. Allah will change my bad deeds into good deeds, so inshallah I'll have more uh, good deeds. So some of the scholars say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the bad deeds of these people into good deeds. Some others say the meaning of this ayah is now that he is straight, but he has tasted, if he used to enjoy drinking or he used to enjoy whatever, and now he's staying away from it, he has the urges to move back, and he fights this urge. So every time he has the urge and fights it, instead of getting a sayyah, he will get hasana because constantly he's fighting the urge of the things he used to enjoy before, but now for the sake of Allah, he has stopped all this, and he's constant jihad with himself to stop, so instead of getting sayyah for committing them, he will get hasanat for the jihad he is doing to stop these things. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمًا وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمَرَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who ask for forgiveness and do the good deeds, they have gotten the best tawbah, insha'Allah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, all the children of Adam commit mistakes, and the best of those who commit mistakes is those who ask for forgiveness. So let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forgiveness, insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. We'll carry on describing the characteristics of Ibadul Rahman, and insha'Allah we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are among them. So we have to listen carefully and say, how does this apply to us? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورُ They don't testify the wrong things. And subhanAllah, as we said, in some of our countries back home, there is somebody sitting in front of the courthouse for you to pay him so he can testify whatever you want. Every case he's walking in, he's paid to testify. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the believers and Ibadul Rahman, they do not testify anything wrong. And as I mentioned before, I always get somebody saying, write me a reference letter. I worked for you and I did this and this. And I said, did you work for me? No. Did you do all this? No. So why do you ask me? He said, what do you have to lose? What do we have to lose? SubhanAllah, we lose our integrity. We lose the trust of people who trust us when we say something. And then we are lying. And Ibadul Rahman, la yashadun az This is the one of the characteristics of Ibadul Rahman. They don't testify falsely. And then others, as we know, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Akbar al the biggest thing we can do wrong, Uquq al-Walidin, to disobey our parents, and then Shahada to Zur, to testify falsely. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept saying, Shahada to Zur, Shahada to Zur, testifying falsely, till the Sahaba said, we wish he would stop. As if Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we know the Sahaba didn't testify falsely. He's looking in the future and seeing all of us, and it's so easy to give a word that is meaning wrong. So our Rasul is sending us the message throughout time. It is the worst thing we can do is testify falsely. And some of the scholars say Shahada to Zul is not only testifying falsely. Shahada means witnessing. But you can sit in, some, in a meeting or something and somebody saying wrong things and you stay quiet. You are witnessing the Zul. You are witnessing the falsehood by you attending this meeting and staying quiet because you've approved. You didn't stand up and say, no, this is wrong. You didn't voice your opinion. You should walk away. So even if you didn't testify or you didn't say, but you are witnessing the falsehood and you should not be part of sitting in a meeting or a speech or something where just people are testifying wrongly and you are accepting this. And then if they pass by people who are enjoying themselves doing something wrong or whatever, they pass uh, quickly and they don't cause trouble. And here, subhanAllah, I look at this ayah and say, it didn't say that they stop and tell them stop what you're doing, because maybe they're not doing haram, but they're just wasting their time, you know, watching the nonsense or doing this. 
I was in Egypt the other day. I, don't know, a whole, I see a whole family sitting and watching Star Academy. And I ask them, there's nothing better to watch or do. So this is a lamb, watching a show that adds no value to anybody's life at all, or, or, but they're sitting and killing an hour. So this is a marro billahu, marro kunama. You walk away and let it be, rather than fight and argue with people, or tell them you're going to go to hell, or all these things. The Abad rahman they walk away and leave all this thing. Then the other character of Abad rahman وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَفِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا سُمَّا وَعَمْيَانًا If they're reminded with the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they just don't forget it as if they haven't seen anything. And subhanAllah, nowadays most of us, this ayah doesn't apply to them. We see the ayat and we're busy going, uh, rushing to work or going to anything, and we forget the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.